the year was 2014. There I was, browsing YouTube, and I noticed a friend of mine upload a video reviewing a game called Super Crate Box on the PlayStation Vita. I had never heard of this game before, but I was intrigued. The game was available on the Vita's PlayStation Mobile section, and it remains the only game I ever bought from there, and I was immediately hooked. But five years have now passed, and Super Crate Box is finally out on the Nintendo Switch, and seeing that my Vita currently has a layer of dust thicker than the console itself, and I have no idea where the charger is for it, I'm very glad I now have another way to play this gem, and I don't think I would have even heard of it if my friends didn't decide to make a YouTube video on it. I can only hope that by making this video, it will bring this game into other people's attention. So what is Super Crate Box? To put it simply, it's a 2D platforming high score game. You're in an arena that's just one screen with monsters falling from the top. So you might be thinking you get your score by defeating the monsters, right? Well, no, you don't get any points from defeating the enemies at all. You get your points from collecting the crates. Each time you collect one, it adds one point to your score and a new box appears in a random spot in the level. And although you don't get any score from defeating the enemies, it's best that you do finish them off, because if they reach the bottom of the level and fall into that fire pit, they reappear again from the top, turn red and move a lot faster. And the real problem with having to avoid them is, one hit and you are dead. But don't you worry, because you can get weapons to defeat them with. Every time you collect a crate, the weapon you have changes, and it's random each time, so you will have to quickly adapt to whichever weapon you received. So although this game is very simple to pick up and play, getting a high score takes a lot of skill and concentration, with a little bit of luck thrown in. The weapons can range from a shotgun, which is better at close range, to a minigun, which is very powerful, but it knocks you backwards as you use it. Some take getting used to, like the disc gun. This shoots a disc that can rebound off a wall and come back and kill you, so you'll have to be constantly aware of what is going on around you. Some weapons you'll find you love, and some you won't, depending on your playstyle. At first I didn't like the mines, but then I realised I could just plant some at the bottom row as a safety guard, so if I fail to kill any enemies on the way down, they won't make it to the pit and come down with a vengeance, because they'll just run into my mine. Strategies like this can add depth to the gameplay, and it's vital that you get to grips with how each weapon works, as you'll constantly be switching between them as you run around trying to collect as many crates as possible. You can switch from a bazooka, to a flamethrower, to a katana, to a grenade launcher, all in the span of 15 seconds. I always get a feeling of triumph when I get a weapon I love, even though I'm going to lose it before long, but it is tempting to just stick around with it and spend some time killing enemies just for the fun of it. I quite often forget I'm supposed to be collecting crates because I'm enjoying the action too much. The controls are very simple, just move left and right, jump and shoot. You can only shoot horizontally and while it's a shame you can't shoot up and down, I feel it's probably for the best as it eliminates the possibility of shooting the wrong way accidentally as the game gets more and more hectic through your run. For some reason, this game does not support the D-pad, you can only use the analog stick. I'm not sure why this decision was made as some players would much prefer the D-pad for a game like this. It controls perfectly fine with the analog stick so it isn't the worst thing, but the option would have been nice. The enemies come in three varieties, small, big and flying, all of which can reach the bottom and reappear as a faster version. Bigger ones are easier to hit but take more hits to kill, and flying ones are harder to aim at but easier to dodge. There are only three levels unfortunately, but I find that's all you need for a high score game like this. But more stages would have been nice, especially since the footage I'm showing you could have had a lot more variety. Graphically, the game goes for a pixel art style which does the job. Everything is clear and you can see where you are and what you're doing, even when it gets mad as more enemies come down as the stage goes on. On the Vita, I never had a problem with how it looked, but on the Switch, 
where I'm playing it on my TV to capture this footage, it's a bit of an eyesore sadly. I feel this game belongs on a smaller screen, so luckily the Switch can be played in handheld mode, and I have no problem with how it looks there. Anyone who bought a Switch Lite recently will feel right at home with this. The music in this game has a nice feel to it, and it's not distracting, although it can get repetitive after a while, but since this is a game that can very happily be played in handheld mode with the sound off while having something played on the TV, you won't be missing too much. Although the sound effects in the game do have a very old school feel to them. There are also some extras in this game. Most of the weapons need to be unlocked, which gradually get added to your arsenal as you collect enough crates in your runs. This means you get introduced to each weapon one by one, so you can get used to how each one works and you aren't overwhelmed all at once. But it's nothing too taxing, I managed to unlock them all within half an hour. There are also characters to unlock by setting certain high scores. The characters all play the same as each other, it's purely a cosmetic change, but who doesn't want to play as a crocodile? And there are extra difficulty modes to obtain too, if you really like a challenge. I mean, just have a look at this. I mean, what, what am I supposed to be doing here? There is one glaring problem I have with the game though, and that is the loading times. Just look at how long it takes to load a new game when I die. There you go, it loads up instantly. So why is this a problem? Well. Because it can load to the next game instantly, I always find myself saying, oh, just one more try every time I fail. So if I have a planned five minute session, that can easily become an hour before I know it. So you better be careful of that if you fancy having a quick session just before you head off to work. You could get stuck there trying to add one more crate to your high score, and then you might end up being late and getting fired. Although if that does happen, then don't worry too much about not making enough money to buy more games, because this game will probably give you more playtime than every AAA game put together this year. There is also a two player mode in this game, where you collect a set amount of crates before your opponent does. It's okay, but it's not something you'll keep coming back to. So is this game worth your money? The short answer is, yes. It only costs £3.89, $4.99 or €4.29, and it also happens to be one of the most addictive games I've ever played. The ever-changing weapons keep each playthrough fresh and unique, as you keep wondering which one you'll get next, and it's a lot of fun fighting through the endless hordes as you try and grab as many crates as you can. Just make sure you play it in handheld mode, and that you have no urgent appointments in the near future, and you'll have a super crate time. Thank you for watching this review, I feel this game didn't get enough attention in the past so hopefully this Switch port will give it some time in the spotlight. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this game and what other games have gotten you so hooked you completely lose track of time. If you like this video then please give us a like that would be most appreciated and make sure you subscribe to see more from us in the future. So I'm Dave from Save Decks. thank you for watching this review, bye bye.